Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing good. In today's video I'll be taking a look at some of Renaissance range of pans. Um, I believe the pan range is different from the tubes, though they're still honey based, but a different formulation. I've got 24 pans here that Renaissance were kind enough to send me, so let's take a look. So first up is Titanium White, made from PW6. I never really use a white watercolour, I much prefer to have a white gouache available for when I need to add some missed highlights. And next is Gamboge Hue, made from PY65 and PY3. Yes, a nice saturated mid-warm yellow. For some reason in my mind I always think of Gamboge as being a bit warmer than this one. Uh, next is Cadmium Yellow Deep and it's made from PY35. Seems like a pretty good Cadmium Yellow. Uh, though yeah, I did think the Deep version would be a bit warmer than this one. And next we have Cadmium Red Deep, and it's made from PR108. Yeah, this is a lovely deep red. Yeah, I really like this one. And next is Thalo Blue Heliogen. And it's made with PB153. I really like the tube version of this paint. And yeah, this one's excellent too. And next is Prussian Blue, made from PB27. Yes, a good strong Prussian blue. And next is Cobalt Cerulean Blue, and it's made from PB36. Yeah, it looks good and granulates nicely. Oh, I forgot to mention that so far all the pans have re-wet really easily. I guess the honey base paints do tend to re-wet quite well. Okay, and the final paint on this top row is Cobalt Turquoise, which is a mix of PB36 and PG50. I think both these cobalt paints are very nice. Now on to the second row with ultramarine green. And uh, this is a mix of PB153 and PG7. So it's an ultramarine green that doesn't contain any ultramarine. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder if it will granulate at all. Next is Cinnabar Green Pale. It's made from PG7, PY3 and PY83. This one kind of reminds me of the 5 pigment golden green from the tube range. I think that paint does have a bit of a wider value range than this one. I don't think this one can go quite as dark. Next we have Hooker's Green. And it's made from PG8. I really like this pigment, but unfortunately it's supposed to have light fastness issues. Uh, Renaissance themselves give it a lower light fast 
rating than the others. Um, it's a shame because it's really nice. And next up is Cinnabar Green Deep, made from PG7 and PY83. Yeah, I think this one's a really good convenience green. Probably the kind of green I would have in my palette, actually. And next we have Venetian Yellow, made from PY53. I made a video a few months back comparing a few PY53s. Um, yeah, this one seems to be a bit paler than those, I think. Or brighter, I should say. It is nice, and yeah, it's very opaque. And next we have Yellow Ochre, which is a mix of PY42 and PY83. Kind of surprised that the yellow ochre isn't a single pigment. It is pretty nice though, I've got to say. And next we have raw sienna, made from PBR7. Wow, it's definitely not what I would expect from a raw sienna. It's, yeah, really red leaning. I actually think it's closer to a burnt sienna. And next is Steel de Grain. Made from PY42, PBR6 and PBK7. So I've never tried this colour before, but it's a very beautiful paint. Um, yeah, I think it would be a good option for a brown on your palette if you don't mind multi-pigment mixes. And now onto the bottom row with Dragon's Blood, made from PR101. So Dragon's Blood's a pretty interesting name for a paint. Uh, the only other one I can think of off the top of my head is May Mary Blue's Dragon Blood, but I think that's completely different pigments to this one. But yeah, this is a nice strong earth red. I do quite like it. And next we have Monaco Bordeaux. It's a mix of PR484 and PR101. I guess this one looks kind of Indian reddish. Um, I had a feeling that PR484 wasn't light fast, but according to the Art is Creation website, it's a more light fast variety of PR48. Um, I guess I'd still have to do my own light fast tests on it though. And next we have Raw Umber, which is made from PBR7. I don't particularly like Raw Umbers, but this one looks pretty good to me. It's not too green leaning. And next is Caput Mortem, made from PR101 and PV23. Yeah, this one's a bit strange for me. Um, I always thought Caput Mortem was supposed to be more of a dull Indian red type color. This one seems way too violet. Next we have Burn Umber. And this one is PBR7. Yeah, this is a really nice deep chocolate brown. Yeah, very nice. And 
next is lamp black and it's made from PBK 11 so unusual to see a PBK 11 as lamp black uh, PBK 11s I've tried in the past tend to granulate quite heavily but yeah as you can see this one doesn't granulate all that much at all and next is renaissance silver oh wow this one actually looks quite nice um, yeah it was actually easy to re-wet as well and the final paint here is renaissance gold yeah again it's quite easy to re-wet Yeah, quite impressed with these final two metallic paints. Not usually the kind of paints I'd use, but they look quite good to me. Okay, that's all of them painted out, and here they are in daylight when completely dry. So just like with the tube range, I'm quite impressed overall with these pans. All the colours were nice and pigmented, and they re-wet very easily. Um, I'd definitely recommend them if half pans are your thing, and they're really, really good value, especially if you're in Europe. Now there are 54 paints listed in the pan range. Though I guess it's 56 if you include the silver and gold. So it's not a huge range of colours available, but I think it's got pretty much all you'd need. Uh, have any of you tried Renaissance pan range? I'd be very interested to hear your experiences. Please let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. I'll speak to you in the next video. Bye bye.